I pray that you've had a great week in our Lord. I pray that you have seen his hand upon you. And I pray that you followed his directions this week. As we look back into God's word, we're in Luke, the second chapter. We're picking up with verse 40. You're going to conclude the chapter, hopefully, today. So I encourage you to get your Bibles out, and let's read through the passage. And the child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. Now his parents were... Uh, his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the Feast of Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up according to custom. And when the feast was ended as they were turning, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. His parents did not know it. But supposing him to be in the group, they went a day's journey. But when they had begun to search for him among their relatives and acquaintances, and when they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem searching for him. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who had heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. And when his parents saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us so? Behold, your father and I have been searching for you in great distress. And he said to them, Why were you looking for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? And that they did not understand the saying that he spoke to them. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was submissive to them. And his mother treasured up all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and man. This is a, a wonderful passage. We're not going to see any miraculous uh, works in this, but what we're going to find is we're going to find a, a profound truth. Uh, this is a, a life-changing moment, uh, not only for his parents, uh, but for us as well. So as as we look at this, we we realize that this is taking place um, when Jesus is 12 years old. Now, there's been a lot of things that has transpired uh, from our last week's lesson and this week's lesson. Uh, Luke doesn't give us a lot of the details, but in Matthew 5, I believe you can find a, a lot of information on this. Uh, remember that um, after Jesus was presented in the temple, uh, after he was uh, purified, or Mary was purified and cleaned, that uh, there's some major events that took place. Uh, remember the wise men came when Jesus was about two years old. Um, we know that uh, in uh, verse 24 of this chapter, they gave a pair of turtle doves and two young pigeons. Uh, at this point, uh, Mary and Joseph did not have funds to purchase the lamb. When the wise men came, uh, they brought wealth and, and they gave gifts of wealth for the family. And, and I think we're going to see some opportunities where that changed their lives through this passage here. But also remember that they left and, and lived in Egypt for a while. Don't know how long, but they went to Egypt. Why? Because Herod uh, wanted Jesus to be killed. And so he called for the slaughter. Uh, Mary and Joseph took uh, their family uh, and they headed to Egypt and were Egypt, in Egypt for a while. And then uh, they come back. And it says, And the child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom. And the favor of God was upon him. Now, can you imagine when Mary and Joseph were going to Egypt, they loaded up their possessions? I don't, uh, I, I'm guessing they, they had a couple of donkeys, maybe even a, a wagon attached to it because uh, they had the means to do that. I wonder what kind of bumper sticker they had on the back of that wagon. Uh, I don't know if you, but I've, I enjoy looking at some bumper stickers. Some um, I'm appalled at, but, 
but you see bumper stickers, you know, my child is a A student or, or my child is a tremendous athlete or all kinds of, of bragging that takes place. What kind of child was Jesus? You know, we're not given a lot of information in scripture about that. Uh, remember that God gave us what he deemed necessary for us to be molded into the image of Christ. So those are some things that, that we really don't know about, but uh, we do know that um, he was unaffected by sin. Uh, it said here that he had been filled with wisdom. That had already taken place. He grew uh, and became strong, filled with wisdom. Um, how much knowledge did he have? Um, if, if you look at John MacArthur, he uh, cites a, a lot of children who were very, very intelligent, uh, even at young ages, able to speak different languages before the age of five. Um, you know, Mozart. It, there's just a, a lot of examples if you want to delve into MacArthur and get that. Um, Jesus was a unique child. Uh, he was God, man. Uh, I can't even wrap my head around what that must have been like. Um, I, I cannot even imagine uh, what it was like for Mary and Joseph uh, to raise a perfect child uh, without incident. Um, so here we have him turning into a young man. Um, it said that uh, at age uh, 13, a, a Jewish boy would become a man. So it says here that now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the Feast of Passover. Let me pause there a minute to tell you that it was not the norm for the women to go to the Passover. It was required for the men. But if women went, it was a great devotion for them to go. And so according to their custom, they went. I'm surmising that because of the, the wealth that they now had, uh, they were able to show their devotion to God by the whole family going to the Passover. Uh, it says when the, uh, let's see, and when he was 12 years old, they went up according to the custom. Now, the custom here is referring to uh, that between 12 and 13, the young child would become a young man. And so they were um, making sure that Jesus uh, was following the devotion that they had to God as well. They were teaching him, train up a child in the way he shall go. Um, now, the Passover, uh, you remember that the Jewish um, in the Old Testament were required to go to three Passovers. They were required to go to Pentecost to or not three Passovers, but three uh, feasts, Pentecost, Passover, and booths. Uh, so as time progressed, most Jewish people, because they were scattered, it was harder to get there. So Passover was the, the big thing. It was in Jerusalem. Uh, they've estimated millions of people would descend upon Jerusalem. Uh, remember when Jesus uh, went for, or Mary and Joseph went for the census. There wasn't any room. It's a very crowded place. Um, it says, and when the feast was ended, they were returning. The boy stayed behind in Jerusalem. His parents did not know this. Now, as they traveled, uh, the women and the children would usually be at the front of the pack, and in the back of the pack would be the men. Now, Mary and Joseph more than likely were guessing that uh, Jesus was with the other uh, parent. Um, there's relatives, there's acquaintances there. there, there it's a large group. Uh, it's at least a three-day journey in traveling. It's, it's 80 miles, and that's a long journey during that time period. But they didn't realize that Jesus wasn't with them. Have you ever been in that situation? Um, have you ever lost a child? Have you ever gone to Walmart or uh, another big event where it's crowded and, 
and you're doing something, uh, maybe purchasing a ticket and you turn around and your child's not there, what do you do? You, you, you start screaming maybe or yelling or, or trying to get attention, uh, maybe run up to a police officer, you, you pull out your cell phone, you, you flash pictures, you ask, you, you panic. Uh, Jesus isn't there. Uh, you know, it said that they went the day's journey, but they begin to search for him with their relatives and the acquaintance, the, the mass people, they can't find him at all. And most of those people probably had an idea who Jesus was at this point in time. Remember, he's come from a small area. He's without sin. Uh, he's a unique young man. And so they didn't find him. They returned to Jerusalem searching for him. Uh, it, it, stopped everything. We're not leaving the store till we have our son. We're, we're not going past here. Now, uh, as a parent, uh, we've lost our children a few times. Uh, maybe I've lost them more than Karen has, but uh, I, I recall um, when Christy was little, uh, we would go to church in two different cars. As a minister, I need to be there early and then she would get the kids together and, and they would travel in the car and go to church. After church was over with, depending on what was going on, uh, sometimes uh, Karen would need to rush the kids and take them to uh, ball practice or game or something like that. Um, and then I would take whoever was not going and we'd head to the house. And, and so on one particular Sunday, uh, I get home and and uh, Karen gets home, uh, it's before cell phone time, and we get a phone call from Christy. Uh, I answer the phone, Dad, did you forget me? Now, luckily, we were only uh, a mile from the church, rush back up there and, and, and get her, but uh, just the thought of what she was going through with us not being there, the, the, the fear of the child. So after three days, they found him in the temple. What a interesting place. Um, the three days, uh, my best guess is it, it was a day's journey that they left on the trip. They couldn't find him at the end of that day. They probably got up the next morning, headed back. Uh, that's another day's journey. And then they spent uh, a, a day looking in Jerusalem. Now, a 12-year-old boy in a big city, this is not the little city of Nazareth. This is a big city. Uh, you know, I'm sure that he wanted to to see the, the big uh, football stadiums or, or maybe even the museums. or uh, he, he wanted to see the skyscrapers. Uh, uh, who knows? There, there's a lot of things that I think would interest a 12-year-old boy. Uh, going back to church, uh, maybe not the average 12-year-old boy, but Jesus was not the 12-year-old boy. So the parents... Uh, probably exhausted. And, and I'm guessing that because they didn't have cell phones, it, it was a little bit more difficult to search for a child. Most children uh, uh, dressed alike. Uh, but anyway, so they, they find him in the temple. Notice what he's doing. He's sitting among the teachers. Now, Luke's very kind at this point when he says sitting among the teachers. Remember, Jesus is going to find himself in his ministry uh, sitting in challenging teachers, uh, the the Pharisees, they're they're not um, they're not what they should be. Uh, has a big thing changed from this point, from twelve to age thirty to thirty three? I don't think so. Um, now remember, it said that he was growing, um, and part of his growth that takes place is is through experiences, and he was listening to them, reverence, respect. Um, and asking them questions. Questions, I, I, you know, I kind of wonder what kind of questions that he might have been asking them. This is Passover. Uh, the Passover was where uh, the death angel came and spared the Jewish uh, people because of the blood on the, the doorpost. Um, the sacrificial lamb came into existence at, at this point in time. Jesus knew that he was going to be the sacrificial lamb. I'm sure that he wanted to find out uh, what they thought about it, uh, what they believed, what they expected. Uh, 
uh, about a Messiah coming. Um, he, he asked questions that intrigued these teachers. They were astonished uh, by him. They were amazed at his understanding and his questions. Well, his parents saw him. They were astonished, and his mother said to him, Now, can you imagine um, what you or, or your spouse would say uh, or you would say to a niece or a nephew if, if you had lost them? Uh, first come up to them. Uh, you know, my first reaction would have been, uh, What were you thinking? Where were you at? Why did you, you know, it, it would be a on them situation. Well, here's Mary, Mother Mary. Son, uh, why have you treated us so? Behold, your father and I have been searching for you in great distress. Uh, they were concerned. They were worried. Um, now, remember, Jesus was without sin. Uh, you know, he, he didn't get his hand caught in the cookie jar because he never put his hand in the cookie jar. Uh, Jesus had made this trip many times, I'm guessing. Uh, he knew the routine, He, but now he's turning into a man. There's a, a profound change taking place. And uh, he replies to them, he says to them, why were you looking for me? What an interesting question to ask his parents. Why were you looking for me? You know, most kids would, would feel uh, distraught if, uh, I mean, three days, what did Jesus eat? Where did he stay? What was going on? Um, uh, we don't know these things. Um, my guess is um, he spent the time in the temple. Maybe there was a mat that he'd lay down on and rest if he needed the rest. Maybe he didn't. You know, through his ministry, we find many times that he went without sleep. Uh, I, I just don't know what took place and happened, but his question is to them, why were you looking for me? In other words, you know who I am. The angels told you, the scriptures have told you, uh, you've watched me all these years. Um, I've been the perfect child without sin. Uh, you know this day's coming. I'm, I'm turning from a child into a man. Uh, I, I, I'm guessing these are the things that are, are going through his head at this time. And then he said, did you not know that I must be in my father's house? Now, as a child growing up, Joseph was his earthly father that, that raised him. But now he's in capital, father's house. He's in God's house. Um, he has a, a, a responsibility to be about his father's business. Uh, he has spent his time uh, growing strong. Uh, MacArthur talks about the strength that he's gonna need. Uh, he was probably more physical than, than other boys at this time. Uh, we just don't know, but he grew uh, in strength and in wisdom. And, and so he says, I must be in my father's house. Uh, and they did not understand his saying. Now, these were the first words that we have recorded from Jesus, period. Uh, interesting, very interesting to me because it's a profound statement with Jesus recognizing that he is the Son of God, that he came for a purpose. It's at Passover. It's a time of redemption. Uh, so, uh, it's a very profound statement to them. And they did not understand what he had spoken to them. Now, you know, if we look back in the second chapter, uh, we find in verse 35, or look back earlier in the chapter, and a sword will pierce through your own soul also. This is Simeon telling Mary. I believe this was one of these experiences uh, when she couldn't find him. Uh, I'm sure that was like a, a sword piercing her heart when she didn't understand what what was taking place and happening here. Now, remember, uh, the disciples didn't get it either. I want to tell you, there's times we don't get it. There's times that 
we read scripture and it, it's written for us. We've got the Holy Spirit, but, but we miss it. We, we fall short. Well, they did not understand. Uh, Mom and dad didn't understand what he had spoken to them, but they knew that a change was taking place. This is where they understood that it wasn't him being bad, that he remained in the temple. It was them not realizing his role and then they're releasing that role. This was a time that his mother came to grips, uh, and I don't know if it was a full come to grips, but to realize that Jesus really wasn't her son. He was God's son. And then we get into the, the final part of, of where our lesson points to. It says, Jesus increases in favor with God and with man. Um, we just left. Jesus prioritizes his father's work. But now he increases in favor. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was submissive to them. Now, how interesting is that? Here's a, a, a turning point, a major uh, turning point. Jesus is becoming the man, Jesus from child to man. Uh, you know, I might think, well, at this point in time, he's sitting in the temple. He could be the, the teacher of all teachers with the knowledge and wisdom that he had. But he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was submissive with them. He was obedient to them. You know, he has gone um, up through becoming a young man, uh, resisting temptation maybe he had to resist temptation all the way through being a man at age 30 so that we could identify with him, that he identified with us, that he was the perfect. He did not fall to sin. When he went to the cross, he had the temptation of every sin that all of us go through, and he had victory over that. And his mother treasured up all these things in her heart, um, there's going to be a lot of things that, that she's going to treasure up. The, the sword that she could not stop. She wants, as most moms and dads want to do, they want to hold on to their children. They, they, they don't want to let them go. up. That's why we sit around and talk about days gone by, the, the success, how good our kids are and what they've done and this and that, whatever. She treasured up all these things, but it was difficult. Uh, can you imagine her letting go of her 12-year-old to become a 13-year-old man now? Uh, there's going to be a time that she's going to want not for him to go to the cross, but he needs to go to the cross. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and the favor with God and man. He was about the will of the Father, patience to wait on God. You know, there's there's some things that, that we can learn, um, some applications that we can take away from this. And I've jotted down a couple of things. One is ultimate obedience to God, um, not, to, not to the earthly authorities we have. Now, you know, we're in a situation right now where uh, the governors, the judges are giving us mandates, and we're to follow the leadership God says God has allowed or positioned people to be in authority over us, and we're just supposed to be submissive to them as long as it does not go or hinder us against God's word. And um, you know we're we're not to gather together right now in groups of more than ten, uh, so we we can't worship together. We can't come to a Bible study together. Uh, I had a gentleman and his wife come up to me last Sunday and. And we had to turn them away from the church building and say, uh, we're gathering together as a church as individual little pockets. Um, and they said, well, we're not of this world. Well, yes, we're not of this world, but we're to be uh, submissive to God. And the ultimate uh, submissiveness is doing what God would have us say. It's important to know God's word and to understand that. You know, in Luke 14, it says, that if we want to be a disciple of Christ, we must be willing to hate our own father and mother, wife, children, brothers, sisters. We must be willing to leave them to be that disciple to follow Christ. 
Uh, another point is nothing should hinder our spiritual growth. You know, the, the Passover was over, the, uh, all the rituals, all the um, requirements that a Jewish young man should go through. It's time to go home. But Jesus had an opportunity to sit under these teachers. Now, realize that these teachers were probably the most profound teachers uh, of the day and of the era. Um, you know, we are a very blessed church, and the fact that we have a pastor who has so many connections with so many very godly leaders. Um, and there's many times he brings guys in that um, other pastors would just be, oh gosh, if we could just have somebody like that. Uh, our church is blessed with that. We should not miss opportunities to sit under these godly men. Uh, you know, nothing should hinder it. When you stop and think about that, what's more important in your life? You know, we're not to forsake the assembling together um, is what the God's word. How many times do we give up those opportunities? How many times do we uh, lose sight of being the disciple that God would want us to be? Um, you know, I stop and think how many times uh, we have an opportunity that we miss. An opportunity to tell a friend, um, listen, um, on Sunday mornings, I'm going to be in, in my place in church. That's where God would have me to be. Sorry, uh, I'll take that fishing trip. I'll take that mall trip. I'll, I'll, whatever else that comes, uh, uh, you know, go early to church before you go to the Texan game. But make points not to let anything hinder your spiritual growth. And then the, the final application is, who is Jesus Christ to you? You know, here in this passage, the, the key point is that, yes, he's fully man, but he's fully God. He's fully God. Now, the scriptures tell us that the devils believe and tremble. Um, they know scriptures probably better than most of us or all of us maybe. Um but knowing the scriptures, there's a big difference when knowing who Jesus Christ is and accepting him as your Lord and Savior. If you've not asked Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior, he's just another man who walked through history. But he came as the God-man to redeem, to pay for our sins. He was sinless, and he paid for our sins, something that we couldn't do. A number of years ago, there was a popular trend going among teenagers. They would wear a little bracelet that would go WWJD. Um, what would Jesus do? This is a great opportunity for us to look at God's Word, to understand what would Jesus do in a particular situation. Not what we'd like Him to do, but what would Jesus actually do? He's given us His Word. He's given us a lesson today. What we need to do is make application from it. God bless you and thank you for joining us. Look forward to seeing you next week.